The M1 Abrams is really the, still the US Army's primary main offensive capability. But it's been around a long time and it's been upgraded and this we're standing there, it's the M1A2. Can you tell us a bit about the upgrades which are going into this field to restore some of its capability? So the M1A2 SEP V3 program is the third iteration of the SEP vehicle. Uh, principal improvements are in lethality, survivability, and in sustainability. In the area of lethality, we've improved the inertial navigation unit to provide better round dispersion, and we've incorporated an automatic data link to be able to manage programmable munitions. In survivability, we've improved the frontal and turret armor, and we've incorporated an IED jamming system. In logistics, we've incorporated an Under Armour Auxiliary Power Unit, which allows you to operate the electronics of the system without having the main engine on. It saves about a third of the fuel of the main engine running um, and reduces wear and tear on, on, on the main engine. You go. Other things that we've incorporated are a 1,000 amp generator uh, to provide additional power for the accommodation of the command and control units that are coming in in the future, the jitters radio, um, and to allow for digital data throughput. In doing that, we had to incorporate an ether Ethernet architecture. So in the Ethernet architecture, while we were doing that, we improved all the line replaceable units to create those, turn those into line replaceable modules that allows us to diagnose down to the card level and remove and replace cards instead of the entire box. Um, those are the principal improvements that we've incorporated into the tank. How about suspension? The vehicle has got heavier and that, yeah. that does affect your suspension, therefore that affects your mobility. So at this particular time, we've already got a 70 ton plus a suspension is system on the vehicle. 70 US tons. 70 US, US tons. tons. Um, and so the weight of the vehicle is still well within the capability of that suspension system. Yeah. They are looking at future opportunities. Um, for potential suspension upgrades um, as, as we go forward, and that'll be contingent upon whatever the next generation of the tank or the next iteration of the tank is going to look like. Could look to active suspension the system or, or perhaps uh, something of that nature, perhaps even. I mean, you've still got the AGT 1500, and in the past you've often talked about putting a diesel in. Do you think that might happen? There might be a M1A3, for example. Yeah, so so we, we looked at like you said, we looked at putting a diesel engine. We did successfully put a diesel engine into the tank and demonstrated that it could fit and that it didn't smoke and that it did, it did provide the same performance capabilities. Um, right now, as the Army balances its priorities, there doesn't Correct. appear to be an interest in pursuing the diesel engine. Um, they think the Under Armour Auxiliary Power Unit will do a lot to remove wear and tear on, on the AGT-1500. Uh, they are looking at potentially a mobility enhancement program as the third generation of engineering change proposal improvements on the tank, and we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, but I mean, the, the vehicle's got so much electronics, that AP really is a must read. It allows you to run your all your main systems with the main engine switched off. It saves power, it saves oh, fuel. It saves a lot of fuel. fuel. And also gives you growth potential too, doesn't it? Um, it, it does. It does. Um, we build growth potential into, really, throughout the alternator. Yeah. Um, by putting on the 1,000 amp generator and and by incorporating additional slots into the line replaceable modules so that there's electronics capacity uh, growth without having to add more boxes into the tank. And when will this cut in production? Is there a time frame? Right now the uh, prototypes are complete. Two have gone to Aberdeen for characterization and instrumentation. The rest of the prototypes will be delivered by the end of October, and the government expects to go into test in the beginning of the year.